Welcome to another edition of Infield Fly, talking baseball with you this week after another busy week of Major League Baseball and another big week coming up as we are now into May. The first month of the season is in the books, and it's a great month for Lang Whitaker, who's with us, a Braves fan. Congratulations on Thank your you. first month. Yeah. It's just, yeah. just, you know, it's just regular business for the Braves. It really is. Just, you know, just taking care of it. In series. So. Yeah, and winning series. Keith Murphy, Cubs fan, with us. Hello, Murph. Not a, not a, hey, best week in the National League Central, I think, belonged to the Cubs. So you got that yeah. going for you. I mean, you know, we, we're okay. It's kind of like the, the tallest midget, but I, I'll take it. <laughs> I got, uh, and then I'm a Cardinals fan. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Jeez, man. Dude, I, I don't, I, I, I just want to give you a hug, Fish. Well, one now, of the and, things- I, and, and I'm a Cubs fan. Usually I'll, <laughs> usually I'll just be kicking you while you're down, but geez, man. One of the things I learned this week is the National League Central is terrible, uh, just as I expected. The reason why I thought the Cardinals would win the division is because the division is terrible. Um, the Cardinals have, you know, they lost eight straight games before winning yesterday, and they didn't lose any ground in the standings <laughs> because the Pirates, the first place team, they've lost eight straight themselves. Yeah. And, uh, the Reds didn't do anything. The Brewers lost a couple of series and uh, the Cubs have been right at about 500 the last week. So Cardinals, uh, for how bad they were, didn't lose any ground because the rest of the National League Central is pretty pathetic. Um, I will say this, and and Lang, you, you saw the Braves this week playing the Baltimore Orioles and uh, saw the Cardinals play the Angels and the Tigers this week. Um, I, 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 I think playing every team in the league is pretty cool. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, interleague play was fine. I wasn't a fan of playing everyone in your division 19 times. It just seemed ridiculous, although that really benefited the Cardinals in the National League Central. But I think it's I think it's a lot cooler being able to see every team every single year. I think it's awesome. I'm I'm a fan of it. I mean, because the Braves are good. <laughs> if I, I mean, because I mean, look, we got to put. We played the Orioles this weekend. Now we played the Red Sox, who are like the hottest team in the league. Um, we played them this week. We played the Mets right before that. Like, it's a tough schedule we've had. Like, luckily, we're good enough to to win some of these games. But, I mean, if I was a team like the, you know, I don't know who's terrible. The Marlins are, pro, oh, yeah, they're okay actually. Um, yeah, they decent. The Cardinals, uh, yeah. The if, Cardinals. I was a, if I was a fan of the Cardinals, like maybe I wouldn't be such a fan of this. Like, I, I mean, you want to be able to to stack up some wins against teams that aren't that good, don't you? Yeah, but 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 it's the right like like the one thing I like is when they say uh, they haven't played this team since 1975 or something like that. That's 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 right. cool. Or whenever yeah. they do that, but you don't really get a chance to do that because it's su- such a parody in the league now. Yeah, like teams are not. You're not sneaking up on any bad teams. That's I, for me, really. There's no such thing as a truly bad team in MLB anymore because the A's. Yeah, it's 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 since yeah the A's. Well, they're they're in the they're in the realm of themselves, but yeah. But usually, when you play these mediocre teams, they could they could still get you, man. Yeah. You speaking know. Speaking of speaking of the A's, um, another team we can start throwing in there is Kansas City. Um, those two teams played each other this weekend in Kansas city and Oakland was actually favored, uh, in a game <laughs> in Kansas city, uh, which means they're just as bad. Uh, yeah. that was, that was stunning to me. And, and Oakland and Kansas city, Kansas City's just as bad as the A's are just awful. Yeah. They're pretty bad. <laughs> and to see the, hold on. I want to see, uh, we put the Braves played them a couple of weeks ago. So that kind of makes up for having to play the Orioles and the Reds. Kansas Sox. city. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the A's won two or three in that series with the Royals. Which, is, so, uh, which, which right. tells you tells you how bad KC is, man. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and speaking, well, though, the A's situation is a lot worse than Kansas City's. Uh, the A's are, are sell, I mentioned this, uh, are selling a summer pass this year that will allow general admission to the Oak Landing. That's out in left field. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get a general admission pass to the Oak Landing for 37 games for $99. Oh, man. And you deal. get a T-shirt free too. Is that is that like a time saver or something? Like <laughs> thirty-seven games for ninety-nine dollars. Do you have to wear the T-shirt? Can you... I, I don't. I don't think you have to wear the T-shirt. I don't. Yeah, that's you, like you have, you have to stay for all, all eight eight innings. 
I don't know if that's true either. I mean, if you're a fan of like the Yankees or the Red Sox or something, that's probably worth buying the whole package just to get into those. Like, it's like when I bought Vanderbilt season tickets a couple of years ago, just, right. to, just to go see Georgia play. Like you could totally do that if you were, lived in that you know region and play. I mean, I, maybe this is where it's not so good to play all the other teams, but if you played, you know, maybe you're a fan of the, some team in their division, the Mariners or something, like right. maybe that's a good way to get into all those games. Yeah, no kidding. 30 so, or $99 for 37 games. That's a heck of a deal. That's like uh, a, one, that's a teeth cleaning, man. Yeah. <laughs> one other note this week, uh, Lang, you sent this to me, a former pitcher uh, for Cleveland, Ray Caldwell, Ray Caldwell, um, an amazing bio. Uh, he was struck by lightning in the ninth inning of the Indians debut on uh, August 24th of 1919. Um, he finished the game after being <laughs> revived. <laughs> And then 17 days later, pitched a no-hitter. He Let me repeat that. He was struck by lightning in the ninth inning and finished the game after being revived. It's incredible. That, that man was dead, basically. Yes. For all intents and purposes, he was, he was, he was, he was pushing. What, what year was it, Fish? Nin- 1919. So I'm just, I looked up his stats on baseball reference. And uh, in 1919, he, he started the season with the Red Sox and got traded to the, uh, I guess, to the Indians at the time. Was that mm-hmm. who they were? And uh, he was, uh, he went five and one with Cleveland while he was there. So I guess it was, that was when it happened. The next season he went, uh, wow, the next season he was really good. He was um, 20 and 10. Oh, wow. In 1920. 1921, he was six and six, and he was done. So the lightning, the lightning finally caught up to him. I guess I <laughs> he lived. He lived till he was 80 years old. Okay, well, yeah. What is impressive. this? The natural? Well, back this then, the... that's pretty impressive. I know. I, actually, I went on here to see if he had a cool nickname because that would be like the best. Like, what was the, you know, his, the Thunderbolt? Boy. Yeah, or something like lightning that. Lightning boy. <laughs> but he doesn't have a nickname. The, the natural. Yeah. No kidding. All right, uh, let's get to our teams. Uh, Ling, I got a lot on the Braves, so let's start with the Cubs. <laughs> Cubs. Cubs this week uh, lost three of four at Washington, won two of three against the Miami. Uh, oh, disappointing series against the Nationals because the team was playing pretty well, um, but did finish yeah. uh, did finish with uh, winning the series against Miami. The the Nationals series, man, that was brutal for us. Like that, mm-hmm. I think I think a lot of Cubs fans were just 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 disgusted and, and confused because we just thought that that was going to be an easy, easy mm-hmm. series for us. At least, at least, at least taking two, right. at least with two, you can come with the split, but um, yeah, man, I, I, I don't, I mean, it's like, I, I just want a memory, like, you know, the, the man in black, when they put that thing in front of your face and you just wash all your memories away. Like, I, I just want that. I don't, I don't want no parts of that series. I don't want to see them for a few games. That was just disgusting. man. In that series, their win, Drew Smiley improved to three and one. He's been great. Um, Dansby Swanson hit his 13th career homer at Nationals Park, most by any visiting player since his debut in 2016. Patrick Wisdom hit his 11th homer. Bellinger had a 19 game on base streak snapped. And uh, then they uh, they walked off uh, in the finale. And then after uh, that, winning two or three against Miami, Justin Steele, now five and oh, he went seven innings, one earned run, six hits. Smiley then had a bad performance, three and a third in a no decision. And then they lost in 14 innings against Sandy Alcantara, touching him in the ninth. Six of the last seven losses, Murph, have been by one run. I, Wait, told I you. remember that last year. That was a that was a problem last year. Yeah, but it's, it's even more of a bigger problem because now uh, we, we, we actually have the talent to overcome those games. And for some reason, we're not doing that. Uh, one silver lining, you know, listen, we, we won a series against tomorrow. So that's good. Uh, uh, the, the the new kid that just brought up, uh, Melvin Mervis, the Mervis kid, the Mash, mm-hmm. they call him Mash. Um, he's good, man. Like, he just comes right out of the gate and just starts hitting balls, man. It's like, I, I, I mean, he's as good as advertised. So hopefully he's going to be the one that kind of like shakes things up. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Rizzo in, in terms of his contact. When he makes contact with the ball, he hits the ball hard every time. Um, we just got to we just, we just got to do something with our with our relief pitching, man. And, yeah. and the, the 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 fourteen innings, we you know we kept coming back. We go down. We kept coming back. We, you know, 
but we just we 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 got to we got to we got to show up our our our, our belief pitching because that's just man, I, 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 that was a terrible game for us to lose. Yeah, and the starting pitching has been good. I mentioned Smiley's three and one, Steele's now five and zero, oh, and Hendricks uh, has got a re- rehab start tomorrow. So uh, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe he's on the way back. I want. I, I think he's the missing. And Stroman, I forgot Stroman. He's been. Good. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Stroman is Stroman. He's been he's been dealing, but um, Henderson. Yeah, I. I I, I just I think this I think this is a good team, Fish. I really do. I just think that, um, you know, manage managing and relief pitching is going to be the story of our season, and we got to start beating some bad teams. Like you can't let the Nationals. I know the Nationals beat us, but that that that's not a good team. Right. It's not a good team. Uh, Cubs now at 17 and 17, 500, just two and a half games back uh, in first place against the Pirates because the Pirates just can't win. Um, here's how, an interesting... how, 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 how how the Pirates been been losing fish? Like what 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 what, what, what what's their issues going? Uh, maybe reality. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. maybe um, it's finally caught up to them, huh? I mean, they've been cute. Yeah. And fun, and, and they also played some good teams. I mean. They had to go to Tampa, best team in the league. And, uh, you know, you're looking at the best team in the National League, best team in the American League, and Tampa took care of business, yeah. sweeping them. And, and then they they had Toronto at home, and Toronto's suddenly caught fire. Oh, uh, And time. they get swept by them. So, so I don't know. The schedule certainly had a little something to do with it, but I think a little dose of reality as well is yeah. probably part of it. Yeah. Um, this this might be the Wilson Contreras show before we're said and done, but uh, <laughs> Cardinals are going to Chicago this week to take on the Cubs. Contreras makes his return to Wrigley. Will he be booed by the Cubs fans? Will he play? And, no. will, and where will he play? I guess is a question too. Yeah, will he? I don't know where he's going to play, but he won't. He won't be booed. Even with the things that he said about. Being, he, a better he's, organization, better organization, a better place. Uh, dreamed I mean, of being here. Well, as long as he did not say anything negative about the fans, I don't think the fans are going to look at it like that way. I might be wrong though. There's this, this Cubs fans are known to be pretty petty. And we can, <laughs> I we mean, can be, uh, Cubs fans know. are also realistic, and maybe they can say, like, you know, our organization hasn't been great the last few years. Yeah, yeah, you know, well, and the Cubs fans might even look at it and say, um, you know, I mean, heck, the way things are going with Contreras right now, and everything that's being said about yeah. Contreras right now, have they fun, might be—they might start saying, "Hey, we're lucky we don't have him anymore." Right, so, right, exactly, exactly. You were, Almost, you were good for us, yay! But right. glad you're gone. Almost, uh, you know, be careful what you wish for, type of thing. You know? Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting uh, to see. We'll talk more about the Cardinals here in a moment. But first, the Braves. Uh, ooh, gonna, ooh, yeah, no, they're ooh. on fire. They're on fire, Murph, and I got a lot of nuggets on the Braves. Uh, they won two or three at the Mets, finished that series up on Monday. Ronald Acuna hit a ball in the third deck in Miami. That was unbelievable to the point where the person who caught the ball was like, did he really just hit the ball all the way up here? Mm. That was mashed. That's best player in the league. Yeah. The best player in the league. I, I'm going to, I'll say it. I'll keep saying it. He's just keep doing stuff like that. Hmm. And then they sweep three at Miami to improve to 15 and three on the road. Unfortunately, we're terrible at home, but go ahead. <laughs> Not terrible, but. And then, then won two or three against Baltimore. Some of the highlights from these, uh, these series, I guess, uh, this, this elder, uh, the elder fella, uh, he's Bryce. pitching well, yeah. Bryce elder. Um, he's three and oh, outpitched Alcantara in the series yeah. against Miami. Um, Strider, uh, gets another, uh, win to go to four and oh, uh, he's got 11 straight with eight or more strikeouts. Um, and then mm. the big story maybe is Marcelo Zuna all of a sudden has, has become a, a fan favorite. Well, I don't know about that, but, yeah. but, but, it, but he's, but he's knocking the ball out of the park. He got intentionally walked on Sunday, uh, to give Michael Harris a chance who gets the game winning hit and the walk off for the Braves. What fearful of Ozuna? Was that serious? It was awesome. I don't know. It was uh, a <clears throat> he. I mean, Ozuna went crazy in Miami. He'd been awful all season, and then in Miami he had the game with the two home runs, um, and then he had another one. And so uh, you know he comes back, and he actually I don't I don't know what in the world happened, but part 
partly it could be that he's just getting booed at home. He's been getting booed at home all season (laughs) and on the road, no one cares. And so, I mean, fans probably like him on the road. Uh, So when he comes up to bat at home, it's, I think it's been tough on him. So he had a little bit of positive momentum coming into this Baltimore series at the end of the game yesterday. They, for some reason, they walked him to face Michael Harris, who had been hurt and just came back and not played great. But Harris, he said after the game, the same pitcher pitched to him the day before. And Harris said the previous game, the first pitch, the guy threw a slider. So he goes, so I assumed he was just going to throw me a slider first pitch. So I sat on it, threw him a slider first pitch. He hit it off the wall and we won the game. Um, yeah. So I, I don't, I, I was feeling like we should try and trade Ozuna immediately to the Marlins as soon as that series. <laughs> ended. I, I don't know like what the plan is long-term there. So there had been thoughts that Ozuna was going to get DFA'd when, uh, Travis Darno came back from the disabled list, and now Darno looks like he's a couple days away. But now I'm guessing if Darno is healthy enough, they'll probably just send down the the backup catcher they called up, Trump, and and just keep Ozuna for now. I don't know. Like uh, he's playing okay, and and Snitker at least publicly seems to have a lot of confidence in him. Who knows off the record what he really thinks, but he constantly is talking about, oh, this guy was in the MVP balloting a couple of years ago and da 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 da. So I don't know, but if he can hit like this, great. I mean, yeah. what's going to happen when he gets back home with all of He's this not, momentum? No, he was home yesterday. So, so what did what, what what did the fans do that game? Oh, they cheered now. Good, <laughs> good, good. After, <laughs> after the way he played in Miami, I mean, give him another twenty at bats and see what happens. But I mean, we're home against the Red Sox this week, so I I don't know if he'll play more or if they're going to be able to kind of keep him uh, in limited roles or whatever. Like as long as he, as long as you can like have him, I would say just avoid right-handers as much as possible. Like maybe that's the plan. The big, the big comeback this week for the Braves was Iglesias, the closer. Like that was huge. He came back and was dominant the two games he pitched, but now the whole bullpen moves back an inning. So, you know, mentors not closing games anymore and, and Dylan Lee and McHugh and all those guys can pitch in the sixth, seventh inning like that. That was enormous for this Braves team. While Iglesias came back, Kyle Wright left with shoulder soreness, put on the injured list, no timetable. Yeah, that's a little uh, frightening. And then Max Fried's supposed to start this week, and they're 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 like this vague. Snicker said something about we have some things we're working through with him. So like, who knows what that means? Like, is he hurt again? Is he not hurt? Is are they just trying to like juggle the rotation so he'll pitch over the weekend? I don't know what's going on there. But uh, right being hurt again, he was pitching in the game, and then there was this weird situation. If you find the clip of it, where the pitching coach and the and the manager come out there and talk to him, and the pitching coach got mad and like walks off. Oh wow! Because <laughs> because I I think Kyle Wright wasn't just being honest and being like, no, my shoulder hurts. And then the trainers out there and all this, and eventually they took him out of the game. But and I guess he was hurt. But uh, it was a weird thing. I I don't know if as long as Elder pitches like that, great. Um, I, I, I still think we think we could use one more sort of veteran arm and maybe a team like the Royals or one of these teams that's falling apart. We could, you know, cherry pick somebody off one of those rosters. Oh, just throw Chavez in there to start. I mean, no, 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 no. He does everything else. He pitched the 10th inning last night, which terrified me. He, he's been the <laughs> setup guy. He's been the setup guy the last two weeks with all, with all the guys hurt and everything. And I was like, oh no. But then they put him into the tenth inning with the man on second, and we got out of it. So I don't know. Maybe he's been okay. Maybe you can get, do one or two of those bullpen games to get through these next few weeks. Yeah, uh, Ronald Acuna Acuna has twenty five, four hundred and forty foot homers. That is the most since two thousand eighteen. He's amazing. This is pretty amazing. He's on pace for seventy five stolen bases and a five eighty four slugging percentage. The only players with 60 stolen bases and a 570 slug since 1900 are Ty Cobb, Joe Morgan, and Ricky Henderson. And on pace for I, I I really think he's going to go crazy with this with the stolen bases. I think it's not going to be one of those normal 25 stolen bases. I think he's going to go for like 40. The only thing that kind of holds him back a little bit, and it happened yesterday is when he gets up on base, um, you know, Matt Olson is after him in the lineup. And there was a couple of times yesterday where Acuna didn't run when Olson was up because I think he didn't want, because the shift, you know, like he didn't want to bring the infielder over to close the hole uh, where where they can like have the guy closer to second base. Even. Right, right, right. So I, I think Acuna, that might temper the numbers a little bit. But I told you guys before the season, like watching him in spring training, you could tell he was in better shape. 
he looked great. Uh, I just knew, I, I said, I thought he was going to have a breakout year and he, he has. It just feels like when he gets on first base to start a game, yeah. he's gone. He's going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and, and it's, uh, it, it's been incredible, uh, to watch him play. Um, also and, the, spent, and in the outfield, he gunned out somebody yesterday from, from right field. He's been great yeah. defensively. Spencer Strider in his first 25 games, um, comparing him to other pitchers in their first 25 games since 1961. He is first in opponent's batting average, 172. Wow. That is the best since 1920. <laughs> first in opponent's on base percentage, first in opponent's uh, OPS, and fourth in opponent's slugging. That's compared to everyone else in their first 25 games. That's, that's, that's I unbelievable. I live with that. Yeah. yeah. Did, did, you know, way, did, did you know he was going to be that dominant so no. early? Lane? I mean, he was a bullpen guy, you know, when he came up. Uh, Hell, you were talking about putting him in the bullpen last year I, I, at the end I of thought, the year. Yeah, for sure. I would have used him. But now he's, he's just – he's great. Um, I The other thing that people – they mentioned this on the broadcast yesterday, the NBC broadcast, which was weird as it was. Um, yeah, that was yeah, weird. It was Ben McDonald was, and Andrew Jones announcing. That was, that was yeah. weird foul, cover in that game or finding um, that game. Yeah, and it started when I was at church yesterday morning. I got an alert because it starts, starts at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Um, so the, like our time, the, the first pitch was like 1030 in the morning. Um, the, the other thing that was interesting was, uh, uh, Strider people always are like, where are the Braves get all these young guys that are Strider and elder were in the same draft. The Braves drafts, both of those dudes and elders just been in the minors until this year. And he's kind of gotten a chance. He's had a couple starts the last few years with injuries and stuff, but, um, you know, it's, it's scouting. And the, the guy who was such a good scout for the Braves is now the GM of the Astros. So watch for them the next few years, I guess. Yeah. Braves in their last 162 games are 109 and 53. Hmm. That'd be a good season record. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the new uniforms? You like the, these, uh, these, uh, they're alternate fine. uniforms, the A? They're fun. Yeah, they're all right. I, I like the, the actual ones from the 70s better. The yeah. one thing that's cool is, uh, uh, I was actually looking at the hats this weekend. I was thinking about buying one, um, but I'm going to go to a game in a couple of weeks. So I thought I'd just get one in person, but underneath, you know, the, the, those uniforms are like a Hank Aaron tribute right. and they have an undershirt that goes with it. And Acuna, you could see it. He had it unbuttoned and it says seven fifty five on the wow. undershirt, which is cool. And then underneath the hat, like under the brim, it has in a different color, uh, real light. It's hard to see, but it says, uh, keep swinging Hank Aaron underneath wow. there. Wow. So it's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. Nice. That's, that nice. sounds dope, yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, I, I don't know what you just said that made me think of this, but Miguel Cabrera uh, yeah. came through St. Louis, and uh, you know he's he's it's his final year. Yeah. And, and they gave him a check for his foundation for thirty five hundred dollars, and people are wondering why it was only thirty five hundred dollars. <laughs> Apparently, it was three thousand for three thousand hits, five hundred for five hundred home runs. Okay. Um, and somebody said that did, did the Tigers play the Braves already? Uh, no. Okay, I, I, so. I forget what team it was, but apparently one of the teams gave him a thousand dollars. So you know, you get that from thirty teams. I guess it is good. weird to give like a the bunch thirty five hundred. I was like thirty five hundred. I mean, that doesn't seem that's like, like a lot respectable. Of money. It, did, but it is weird to just give money to a player on another team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't. It feels like there's rules against that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, it is, it is, it is, his, way. it is his foundation. I get it, but yeah, you know, still, so, you know, yeah. All right, Cardinals. Um, oh man, can we? Is like, is there like some background music we can play for you guys? Like holy some, crap, real uh, somber, Cardinals, somber. Someone call Timmy taps. Trumpet, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call Timmy Trumpet swept mm. three by the Angels. Steven Matz fell to 0 and 4. Uh, Dylan Carlson hit his first home run of the season. Hey. hey, hey. Uh, Cardinals allowed three in the ninth to lose six, four in that series. Uh, the Cardinals fans, the, you know, the best fans in base, yeah. baseball, the B-fibs, um, booing mercil mercilessly against the Cardinals this week, booing from the home fans and all the players were asked about it. And they said, well, when we're playing that bad, I guess they're going to boo. So, uh, but the Cardinal fans booing, you don't see that very often. Jack Flaherty, he exited early after two and a third, he went two and a third and gave up 10 runs. Uh, and afterwards they asked if he left early cause there was a problem. He said, I left early because I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like so, a problem. So there was that, uh, then they lose two or three against Detroit. Uh, 
picks again uh pick just they decide to pitch him and he went two and a third gave up three earned runs got a loss adam wainwright returned went five innings gave up four earned runs didn't get a decision paul goldschmidt hit three home runs in the finale to snap an eight game losing streak cardinals now four and 12 their last 16 at home they snapped the losing streak but the big news is wilson Contreras uh getting all the blame apparently for the cardinals struggles uh, by the way, that, that win yesterday was the first win the Cardinals have had since I met Ali Marmel. So, wow. wow. So, yeah. Wow. So maybe the fish curse. The yes. Fish curse. Yeah. Yes. Um, but Wilson Contreras, uh, the big pickup in the offseason, the big catcher to replace Yadier Molina, uh, is is no longer catching for the Cardinals. Hmm. Uh, and, and the reason being uh, because he apparently sucks. he's not a good catcher. And, and, and apparently they're blaming him for the pitching woes has nothing to do with Steven Matz, Jake Woodford, Jack Flaherty, Adam Wainwright yeah. right. uh, has nothing right. to do with this horrendous Cardinals pitching staff. It has everything to do with Contreras. Then the initial story was that he's going to play outfield and designated hitter. He does have yeah. 35 career games in the outfield, 32 of them in left field. Um, but then now they're saying that he's not, and, and Ali Marmel was asked, well, what does he need to work on in the outfield? He said, I don't think really that should be the question. The question should be what he should be working on behind the plate. Mm -hmm. Um, and now they're saying he's not going to play outfield. He's going to DH Ali Marmel on the areas that the club wants to see improvement from Wilson Contreras. He said, quote, I wouldn't say pregame prep as much as, well, that would be a simplification of it. There's real work to be done. The way I would describe it is truly understanding our internal system of executing the game plan for each individual pitcher. The reality is it's more than he's ever had to do. Nothing against the way he's done it or where he was. Oh, look at that. Oh, come on, man. But it's very different here, and it's a lot of work. So apparently, he was just skating by with the Cubs for all no, these years. No, no, no. And wait, now wait, he's wait. in a real yeah. organization yeah. that expects yeah. you yeah. to call pitches and call a game. They're, they're scapegoating this dude. This is Why what's happening. Why would you do that? They're scapegoating him because their, pitch, their pitchers suck, and they know that they suck. And it's so no they're taking about, it out on their big free agent? I don't care if Carton Fisk is back there. There's nothing that man could do to help that rotation. That's a dude, you said it yourself. You're like, who are these people? Yeah. That's pitching. Like, now I'm not even talking about skill set. I'm saying, who are you? Like, where did you come from? Like, can't they, like yeah, can't they yeah. call pitches from the bench? Like um they used, used to use dude, pitch com. The pitchers, yes. the pitchers can call their own pitches now. Yeah, but like it's I, all... it's, yeah, it's, sca it's scapegoat. It's scapegoating to do. And I, listen, I I was unhappy when he went with you guys. You know that I said I did not want him going to you. I, I said that, but that's just that's just ridiculous. There was one line in there, Fish, where he said something about it's something about the, the preparation or sticking to the game plan or something. Yeah, yeah, like that's what makes it sound like all right. This guy's just doing whatever he wants, yeah. whatever the actual you know situation is, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Contreras made it worse uh, by saying that he's been talking to Yadi Molina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing is, Yad, uh, there are a lot of people right now who want Ali Marmel to be fired and hire Molina as the yeah. manager of the team. Um, there were a lot of people, obviously, Cardinal fans were, were you know, it. we knew it was the end of Yadi or Molina last year. And, um, but now they're saying, boy, we're really missing Yadier Molina, and it'd be great if he'd come back as a manager. Well, Contreras comes out and says, I've been speaking with Yadier Molina, asking him what I can do differently, and Yadi told me that I'm doing everything fine. The pitchers just aren't executing. <laughs> it's, it's there, man. Like, I, I don't – listen, listen. You're talking about a former all-star. He's not going to drop off like that. He just can't catch. Man just he yeah, forgot yeah. how to catch. Yeah. Doesn't, forgot, in Chicago, out of it was chance. different. In Chicago, yeah, you yeah. just put the glove up, yeah, frame yeah, it, and yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's yeah. It. he's just, you know, you just walk up, you just walk up and just hold hold, hold up your glove and then the, the ball just comes there mysteriously. Come on, man. I was interested yesterday when Contreras, because all this coming out over the last couple of days, I was interested yesterday when Contreras came to the plate, how the reaction would be from the fans, because the fans were very excited to get Wilson Contreras. I mean, if you got to replace Yadier Molina. 
you got a guy who's a multiple all-star, mm -hmm. uh, the guy who's got some offensive pop, guy who's been a good defensive catcher. Uh, so everybody was happy to get Wilson Contreras from the Cubs. And, and so I was wondering yesterday, are they going to boo this guy now? I mean, the way that the Cardinals are throwing him under the bus, are the fans going to boo him? And especially if he goes up there in a big spot and, you know, can't get the hit. And But they were fine. I mean, there was no booing of Contreras. But I was like, man, they just – they threw this guy under that, that, that I thought he, they'd leave him out for the Wolves, and um, it, it at least didn't happen. And I think it's good that the Cardinals are hitting the road. Uh, although but At this point, I mean, don't the fans trust Contreras more than they do Marble? <laughs> probably. Yeah, you're probably right. Once, I, once again, just look at the rotation, Fish. Seriously. Like, we, we spoke early on in, in, in the podcast this season about you're like, Wainwright is your guy. If Wainwright is your guy, that's the problem. Yes. Like, he can't be the best pitcher on your rotation. That's the problem. Yeah. You can't sure have this guy sure coming in throwing 85 miles an hour. And I'm sure Molina just hates being the center of the attention. Also. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if he'd take over oh. as manager of the I, team? I was thinking, you know who's going to walk to the mound slower than Ali Marmoth? Yadi or Molina. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Yadi ran around twice the twice the visits? Yeah. Yeah. He, he ran around the bases slower than Ali. They put in the part of the, the the pitch clock and all that rules is is Molina going to the mound a thousand times when he was catching. <laughs> <laughs> now the Cardinals in a related move uh, with Contreras. They and Contreras didn't know they called up their another catcher yeah. from Memphis and oh, man. saw his locker and was wondering why did we call him up and then he found out that he's not going to be catching anymore. Uh, but in that move, the Cardinals sent reliever Zach Thompson down to Memphis because they need starting pitching. So they're, they're taking Zach Thompson down to Memphis to stretch him out to become a starter. He got his first start with the Redbirds yesterday. He went 35 pitches. We got to stretch him out. <laughs> well, it turns out they're stretching him out to be a starter in 2024. Jeez. Does it really take that long to stretch out a pitcher a year? This is like an uh, allow him to be a starter. I mean, Spencer Strider. Well, it took him. He, I don't think he started that year. I think he came back the next year as a starter. So who knows? But he's like a robot anyway. I was thinking of it when you said stretch him out. It's like in uh, Willy Wonka when they take uh, <laughs> yeah the Mike TV gets shrunken down and they have to take mm, him yeah. and stretch him out. That's what yeah, they need to yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, for you betting people, Cardinals and the Cubs today. Cardinals are the first Major League Baseball team to start a season 0-11 mm. in series opening games. First mm. team to do that since the Royals in 1981. They went 0-13. Kansas City, by the way, ended up making the playoffs that year and won the AL West in the second half of the split season. So there is wow. hope uh, for the Cardinals. But 0-11 in series openers, Cardinals and the Cubs, uh, tonight uh, with the opener of their series. But, yeah, Cardinals are uh, – Man, I wish I was I wish I was back there, man. Jeez. Yeah. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast and you're not listening to it on the uh, Grind City Media app, uh, it's a much easier way to do it. Download the brand new official Grind City Media mobile app and explore new ways to access your favorite GCM content content from your favorite shows and series to news and entertainment. You can stay connected with exclusive content at your fingertips with the new Grind City Media mobile app available in both the Apple and Google Play stores also uh 23 24 half season plans are on sale now for the grizzlies place your deposit today lock in your opportunity to purchase seats before they go on sale to the general public plus half season plans provide significant savings off single game pricing and more visit grizzlies.com or call 901-888-HOOP for more information all right uh looking around major league baseball and uh uh we'll start in the american league the yankees uh, won two or three against Cleveland, lost two or three at Tampa Bay. Um, the Yankees have won, uh, well, before yesterday, they had won all seven of Garrett Cole's starts this season. He had an ERA of 135, was the first Yankee starter since Bob Turley in 1958 with an undefeated team record through seven starts and an ERA of 150 or less. Uh, then yesterday in the finale, they lost Cole's start. He allowed five earned runs in five innings pitched. But the big news for the Yankees is that they are in last place. Mm. Last place at 16 and 17, or I'm sorry, at 18 and 17. They're over 500, 18 yep. and 17, but they're 10 games out of first 
Injuries have been a problem. Aaron Judge is expected back tomorrow with a hip injury and Carlos Rodon, their big free agent signing in the offseason. Six years, $162 million has been diagnosed with chronic back issues. Wow. And he'll get Jeez. a cortisone shot to see if it helps out at all. But that's that's the worst you can do as a baseball player. He's, oh man. Or as a as a human, chronic I'm sitting here right now. I got a heating pad on my back. Look, I got the <laughs> thing right here. Yeah. <laughs> 162 million for six years. He's yet to pitch a game uh, for the Yankees. You just, you just think that division is just too good at the moment. Like it's just such a competitive division that even if you are two, three games over 500, it doesn't matter. You can still be next to last place. I mean, Baltimore's 10 games over 500 and they're five and a half out. Yeah. yeah. And Same. lost Toronto seven out. They're five, seven over 500. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the Rays are off to such an amazing start. Yeah, they got a nice cushion. That they have a huge cushion. Uh, they swept three against Pittsburgh. Wander hit a sixth home run. Shane McClanahan improved to 6-0. and oh. Zach Eflin improved to 4-0. and oh. uh, And then they won two or three against the Yankees. All of them were one-run games. The Rosarena had his ninth home run. The Rays are 22-0 and oh when they score first, although that was snapped on Saturday. So that came to a close on Saturday. Mm-hmm. They were 22-0 and oh when they score first. Which is pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. impressive. Is, uh, is, Bo- is Boston the hottest team right now in that division? Yes. Uh, Boston is on fire. They had an eight game win streak snapped yesterday. They're eight, one, eight of nine. They're 21 and 15, seven and a half back. Hmm. They won two or three at Philadelphia. Chris Sale, six innings, three earned runs, 10 strikeouts. Uh, Alex Verdugo joined Andrew Jones and Bobby Bonds as the only players with three or more walk off hits in their team's first 30 games of a season. Hmm. Raphael Devers hit his 150th home run of his career in game number 721. Third fewest to hit 150 in a Red Sox uh, franchise history. The only to hit 150 faster, Ted Williams and Jim Rice. And they Hmm. had their eight-game win streak snapped on Sunday. Uh, Meanwhile, Tampa, they uh, well, I told you about Tampa. Toronto, Bo Bichette had his third career five-hit game, including his second this season. Third player with multiple five-hit games within the team's first 30 of a season. The other's Tony Gwynn and Kenny Lofton. And then they sweep three at Pittsburgh. Chris Bassett's really good. Seven innings pitch, no runs. You say Kikuchi improved to 5-0. and oh. They outscored Pittsburgh 22-3 to three mm. in that series. Toronto's offense is just dynamic. And they're 21-14. Yeah. and 14. I mean, don't sleep on the Toronto Blue Jays either. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're hitting in all cylinders not right now. But I, I just... It's between them and Boston right now. To me, that's just those, those are the two stories in the division. Besides, you know, the Rays doing their thing, but man, just Boston, man. Yeah, Baltimore Shocking. won two of three at Kansas City, lost two of three at Atlanta. In Kansas City, Ryan Mountcastle had two homers and five RBIs in one game. Gunnar Henderson hit his third homer. Uh, Anthony Santander hit a grand slam in the win against the Braves. They've come from behind in twelve of their twenty-two wins. What do you think of the Orioles, Lang? They're good. I mean, they're a very young team. Like there, there was that was the team that you would think like they would have gone out and gotten some veteran at you know, over the off season. Like you know that one big bat, one name. Right. Like they could have used a Bellinger or somebody like that. Um, but they're a really good team, very young team to me, and they you know they're playing with a lot of excitement and all that stuff. But um, I, they're a little bit remind me of the Mets. Like um, they have more power, but they're really good at just putting the ball in play and getting on base and you know all that stuff. They, yeah. they kept it tough for you guys, man. Yeah, they're good. I, that was a, I, that was a tough that was a tough game for you guys. I love Rutschman. Um, yeah, like yeah. you don't see a lot of switch hitting catchers, um, and he's got a great arm, and I, I thought he was awesome. Yeah, he's really really good. Uh, in the American League Central, worst division in baseball, the first place Minnesota Twins at nineteen and sixteen lost four of six games this week. They lost to the White Sox two of three and lost two of three to Cleveland. However, they have a guy named Bailey Ober who went seven scoreless innings in a win to go two and zero on the season. Joe Ryan fell to five and one in the loss. Unrelated, but with cool names, uh, I saw that the University of Kentucky hired a new golf coach this week, and his name is Gator Todd. Oh, <laughs> kind of cool. I like that. That's kind of cool. That's a cool name. Uh, Cleveland, they are in second place, two and a half back. They're 16 and 18 on the season. Uh, they lost two or three at the Yankees, and they won two or three against Minnesota head to head. Cal Quantrill with a win over Joe Ryan. The White Sox are seven games back, only seven games back at 12 and 23. Uh, they did win two or three over Minnesota. First series win of the season for the Chicago White Sox. 
Yeah, and, it's crazy. And they have a pitcher named Kenyon Middleton. He's their closer. Uh, he finished his first save since 2021, striking out Carlos Correa on a fastball. He said, quote, I knew I was going to face Correa, and I don't like him. So it's kind of <laughs> cool. Uh, he said, I like that. I enjoyed that a lot. I mean, he's a cheater. Wow. Yeah. Correa responded with, I've heard worse. So You've heard worse really... that you're a cheater? That's, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, White Sox also won two or three at Cincinnati. They scored 17 in the finale. Uh, 11 runs in the second inning, tied for the third most in any inning in franchise history. The last time they scored more than 11 innings in an inning was June of 1952 against the Philadelphia Athletics. And Lance Lynn got his first win for the White Sox. So they're, they're playing well, but they're they're playing well, and they're right. 12 and 23. They're, they're running in place, basically. Like, whatever wins they get, it doesn't really matter because they just dug themselves a, a deep hole. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City, uh, with their losing the series to uh, Oakland, uh, they are now um, nine and twenty-six, but they're only ten games back. At nine and twenty-six. Zach Greinke got his first win, and Detroit is on fire. Detroit's just three games back in the American League Central after winning two or three against St. Louis. How about this nugget? Javi Baez has played six consecutive complete Major League Baseball games and has not struck out a single time. First time he's ever done that in his career. It's amazing. That is crazy. That's a crazy stat. <laughs> maybe it's all coming together for him again, you know? Like, maybe he's kind of the, the, the Cubs, Cubs championship year is kind of coming back. Because he didn't really do that during the championship year. He was still striking out yeah. during, that, during that season, you know? But he just he did so had a home run against the Cardinals as well. Yeah, he's uh, it, In the West, uh, Houston... They lost two or three to San Francisco. They lost two or three to Seattle. And then they got worse news. Luis Garcia, Tommy John surgery, starting pitcher. He is done for the season. And Jose Urquidy, uh, shoulder issue. He is done for the foreseeable future. Dusty Baker wondering if these injuries are because of the World Baseball Classic. So only the Astros players got hurt in the World Baseball Classic. Well, and Altuve's out too. You know, yeah. but The th three guys. Ronald Acuna played in the World Baseball Classic too. How's he doing? Yeah, <laughs> some of the car I mean, yesterday. It, 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 I mean, you can say whatever you want. You can use whatever excuse you want because yesterday, some of the Cardinals who are struggling, they're like, "Well, you know, maybe the World Baseball Classic." Yeah, you know, you're playing really well, and then all of a sudden, you got a week off, and you just kind of lose it. And it's like, well, I don't. No, I'm not using that as an excuse. Uh, also in the American League West, Texas Rangers are the first place team. They split two against Arizona, and then won two or three at Los Angeles. Friday, they got a guy named Josh Spores. He became the first baseball pitcher to have his only pitch of the game be a walk-off wild pitch uh, since Pirates closer Brad Klontz did it at Shea Stadium Braves in October legend. of 99. Braves legend. His wild pitch helped the Mets force a one-game playoff with the Reds the next day, which they won. So uh, that was that happened. Nathan Avaldi, uh, he is a uh, eight innings pitch, no runs. He's improved to four and two for the Rangers as they are still without DeGrom, but they got a two game lead over the Angels who swept three in St. Louis. Shohei had an eight game hit streak. Mike Trout hit his eighth home run and then they lost two or three against Texas. Anthony Rendon hit his first home run of the season. Yeah, that big contract for him. finally, finally wow. pays off. Yeah. The, uh, the, the clock just keeps ticking for Shohei. Every time you mention Shohei, I just, there's like a massive clock that I just envisioned. It's just people are like like licking their chops. Just speaking speaking of players happen. who played in the World Baseball Classic, yeah, he's doing okay too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks for uh, thanks for keeping receipts here, Lane. Um, he, the Angels <laughs> are only two games back, so uh, that clock that you're talking about, Murph. When do the Angels? How long do the Angels have before they decide if they're going to do something? I mean, you can't do it when you're two games out of first place. I mean, uh, they're just going to wait and see how, how the season takes them, man. I think mid-season, they'll know. Yeah. Mid-season, they'll know. Seattle, uh, along with Houston, they're at 500, three and a half games back. They swept three at Oakland, one, two, or three against uh, Houston. This Bryce Miller cat from Seattle is something <laughs> special. Uh, he retired the first 16 batters he faced Tuesday. It was the second longest perfect game bid in a pitcher's debut in the expansion era. He's the only pitcher in the modern era to have 10 strikeouts and no walks in his debut, but he didn't get the win. 
But then he came back yesterday and went six innings, two hits, no runs. First pitcher in Mariners history with at least six innings pitched and one or zero runs allowed in each of his first two career Major League Baseball starts. And he was nasty yesterday uh, against the Houston Astros. Uh, I had money on that one, so it was good. Go for the go to Mariners. Julio Rodriguez did hit a home run. Robbie Ray, Tommy John surgery. So uh, a yeah. bad one there for them. Um, the Oakland A's, uh, oh, they're still the last, worst team in the league. They're the, even though they won two or three against the Astros, they now have eight wins on the season. They are eight and 27. Wednesday's game in Oakland had 2,583 fans. No way. Did you that see is, the video? There was, it, there was, it didn't look 20, like that many. 250 fans. That is less than their triple A, double A, and single A affiliates averaged last season. They got to get out of there, fish. They got to get out of there, man. I actually read a story today about the, the A's um, play by play announcer. And I know, fish, you might be more attuned to this than we are just because the broadcasters stick together. And it's a guy who's in his, he's like 57 years old or something like that. And this is his first time making it to the majors as the as an announcer um and it was a really great story kind of heartwarming he's been in the minors he was on the sacramento triple a team for 30 years as their voice trying to get to the majors and he finally got the call up and he but the whole time i was thinking yeah but he's the a's announcer like <laughs> you, finally, you finally make it it's awesome i'm glad for this guy to make yeah. it to the majors but it's the a's and now they're going to move like, like, like if you're this guy, you're like, Oh, now I got to move to Vegas. I mean, whatever, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a bit of the curse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, National league, the Mets are under 500. Wow. All that money. Yeah. And, but they got the vote of support from their general manager yesterday. Oh, we got right. the team to do it. Yeah. So they're good. Uh, they lost two or three to Atlanta. They were swept in Detroit and then lost two or three to Colorado. The, the Mets have not won consecutive games since April 19th, the 21st. Mm. Verlander got lit up. Scherzer got lit up. Kode Senga is now four and one, but the Mets, I don't know. What's their problem? Ever since Timmy Trumpet, Trumpet went down. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah but they're not even getting to save situations. Like the, we saw it last year. They can't. They don't have power. Like it was just all, you know, dinking and dunking. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I haven't watched them a lot this year, to be honest. I only saw the Braves beat them in that series, but um, I don't know. I feel like they're spending money, but maybe not in the right places. Yeah. Uh, Philadelphia, meanwhile, they swept. Uh, they were swept three by the Dodgers, and lost two or three to Boston. Uh, they snapped a seven-game losing streak in the finale. Uh, Bryce Harper, who went 0 for 4 in his debut, the last four games, he's 7 of 15 with six runs, two a double, a home run, and an RBI. Harper came back Tuesday just 160 days after undergoing Tommy John surgery, the fastest major league player on record to return from the surgery. How about it's impressive. That? Yeah. It's not, even a, it's not even a big deal anymore. Remember that was like a death sentence? Yeah. yeah. For players? Like, it's like, it's like a... Nothing now. Who's the bigger disappointment, the Mets or the Phillies? I mean, the Phillies were in the World Series last year. You can't I'm, count the Phillies with Harper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to say the Mets easily. And Hoskins for the Phillies. Like you know, you're missing yeah, two true. of your best players. Like that, I don't think you can count them. Yeah, yeah. And it's Mets. I mean, I guess the Mets. You could make the same case that you know Verlander's been hurt and. Uh, yeah, but they they, they, and, they should they they shouldn't be this bad though. Like yeah, like they're they're like they're like man, like I'm looking at that team like that does not look like a team from last year. Yeah, spent a billion dollars uh, on your team. I mean, need to be a little bit better than this. Miami lost two or three at Chicago against Cubs. Sandy Alcantara yesterday threw 113 pitches and lost the lead in the ninth inning. Uh, Miami did win the game in 14, but Alcantara is winless in his last five starts. Miami improved to 11-0 and in one-run games, matching the 72 Mets for the record for most consecutive wins in one-run games to begin a season. But the story is Alcantara, 113 pitches. Um, what is Miami doing throwing this guy complete games and a hundred? He might be their biggest asset they have. I don't think they have much more choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say that. Like, what what else can they do, man? I mean, the I mean they're the home. only team that's not like counting pitches on their star pitchers <laughs> and 113 and just let them go. 
counting uh, pitches. They they buried the pitch counter. The, that that joint is buried somewhere in the ground, man. They never, they don't even look at it when that guy comes up on the mound. No, which I love watching them, and I love the yeah. idea that a guy actually can complete games, and and I love the idea that a guy can throw over over a hundred pitches. Yeah, but I just don't know if it's very smart. Yeah, well, well, yeah. What are I they? Mean, don't, don't you think they're going to trade him at some point? Yeah, I, you would hope, but they've been doing that for. 20 years now Although trading maybe their not. best young players maybe not they are second place in the national league east yeah i was gonna say they're not terrible yeah although they're seven games out and under 500 um national league central milwaukee was swept three at colorado they lost two or three at san francisco snapped a six game losing streak in the finale that's how bad the central division is i mean yeah the brewers yeah, suck it's horrible the pirates suck they were swept three at tampa swept three against toronto the Pirates were 20 and eight. Yeah, they were the fun team earlier. <laughs> 20 and eight. Now they've lost seven in a row. It's the highest winning percentage by a baseball team entering a seven game losing streak uh, since the 81 A's were 25 and eight and then lost eight straight games. Pirates were 20 and eight and have lost seven straight games. So the Cardinals uh, have moved up a game uh, since we talked last week, despite the fact they only won one game. Moved up to nine games back. Failing upward. Hey, all I got to do, Lang, get, get hot, get hot. Get yeah. hot. Uh, National League West, the Dodgers sweep Philadelphia. They scored 36 runs, 13, 13, and 10. Jason Hayward's got four bombs on the season. Remember him? I, lo- I, lo- I love that story. I love everything about this story. Hope that guy just comes back and just shuts everybody up. Yeah. Julio Urias uh, recorded a second career start of seven innings, one hit, and 10 strikeouts. Third Dodgers pitcher since 1893. With multiple games of seven innings, one or fewer hits allowed, and at least 10 Ks. Koufax did it five times. Kershaw did it five times as well. Uh, Dodgers' first team in history with ninth inning tie-breaking grand slam twice in a span of two weeks or less. Max Muncie did that with his 12th home run. And the 36 runs in the series against the Phillies tied the most in any three-game series since moving to Los Angeles in 1958. It was the most ever in a three-game series at Dodgers Stadium. Then they went in extras after being down 2-1 in the ninth against San Diego to win two out of three. Dodgers have moved back into first place, game and a half up on the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks. That's a legit, that's a legit squad, right? Fish, like yeah, they, 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 so. got, they got their mojo again, right? Looks like they're like, they know what they are. Yeah, I heard Mookie Betts talking yesterday about, you know, we're still not playing really well. I mean, they've had to play really well here in the last two weeks to take over first place. So it seems like they're starting to get it. I think what's happening now is, the pitching starting to come around for the Dodgers as well. Mm-hmm. They got Tony Gonsolin back, which is huge. Dustin May has been great. He improved to four and one. Oh, Mays has uh, been insane. He's been nuts. Kershaw has been amazing. He's been five and one. Um, so they're starting. I think that that's been a big key for the Dodgers is getting some of the starting pitching back in Arizona. I mean, they're, they're scrappy. They're scrappy <laughs> and they'll be around. Christian Walker's on fire. He's got eight home runs, had two homers, five RBIs in the win against Texas. They also won two or three against Washington, Arizona, a game and a half back. Padres are a 500 team. They won two or three against Cincinnati. Fernando Tatis had three hits in his return to Petco. Blake Snell picked up his first win of the season. And Fernando Tatis uh, became the first player to hit multiple home runs in a game against Clayton Kershaw twice. Did, did, they, you, uh, guys, did, did, you, guys, did you guys see something about a, an announcer saying something about Tatis during the game, talking about him? being a cheater or something like that. I think I read something about that. I'm not, no. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was Tatis. Who, 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 am I right, Lang? Who was it? I, I thought you were talking about the Negro League Museum announcer. Yeah. Yeah, the Negro League Museum announcer. Yeah, like, he wow, kinda, man. Didn't, didn't say it very clearly. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't see the Tatis thing. I saw the guy in the minors who pitched to him called him a cheater. <laughs> and the fans were calling him, a, singing yeah. to him, calling him a cheater. Uh, which he danced to, which was uh, interesting. I don't care. I still love watching him play. Yeah, he's an he's an amazing player. Uh, speaking of uh, Colorado, how about this? I wasn't speaking of Colorado, but I'll bring this up. Uh, they swept three against Milwaukee and won two or three against the Mets. Chris Bryant's got five home runs on the season. Oh, he's finally uh, he's finally earning his money, huh? He's starting to come alive a little bit. Good to hear from him. Yeah, good to hear from him. Uh, some of our uh, favorite players, uh, Shohei Otani. Uh, became the only player in history to have 500 strikeouts as a pitcher and 100 home runs as a hitter. Um, uh, it, it, the, the, the only players to do that are Babe Ruth and Otani. 
It took Otani just 388 and two-thirds innings as a starter to log 500 career strikeouts. According to Elias, it's the second fewest innings as a starter to reach 500, trailing only Corbin Burns. Wow. Yeah, how about that? Wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, And in a seven-day span, Shohei had 11 hits and 21 strikeouts pitching. 11 hits hitting uh, and 21 strikeouts pitching. No other player in the modern era has had a 10-week hit and 20 strikeout week during the same season. Uh, Wander, how about Wander's uh, ball flip to himself? That was awesome. awesome. You sure you're not you're not upset about it? No. You're asking the wrong podcast to be upset about that. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, and Juan Soto's average is over 200. So we got hey. that going. Yeah, so congratulations like to Williams. Juan Soto. Yeah. Uh, my betting on the Cardinals this year, I'm on. I'm not doing very well. I'm now 18 and 17, betting every mm-hmm. Cardinal game. I've lost five straight. I've been betting on the do theory. And mm-hmm. it's, eventually just, it's going to happen. Yeah. This week, Cardinals will play three in Chicago, three in Boston. Braves got three against Boston and three at Toronto. You get to see those American yeah, League no. teams playing, and uh, not easy ones. Boston's I, playing I well. I need to look up strength of schedule because the Braves' strength of schedule must be through the roof. And to have this record, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, Car- uh, Cubs got three with the Cardinals, then three in Minnesota. Uh, and then other games to watch out for this week. Uh, early in the week, Tampa's at Baltimore for three. Dodgers visit Milwaukee for three. Detroit at Cleveland for three. Houston visits the Angels. Texas at Seattle, a couple of big American League West division battles there. San Diego's in Minnesota and Tampa. Then this weekend, Tampa at the Yankees for four. Seattle will visit Detroit, Pittsburgh at Baltimore, Angels at Cleveland, and San Diego at the Dodgers. Mm. All right, fellas. There you go. There's there's your week in baseball. You good with that? You good with that? Cardinals, Cubs. You ready for that, Murph? I'm I'm ready. I'm ready, baby. I'm ready. What are we talking about? What are we what? What are we betting on it? Not too box of donuts or something like i don't you know mm. we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta make a bet fish i don't know what we gotta do yeah Maybe, the question uh... would be what do you want <laughs> i'm expecting manager. a bit i'm expecting a cut yeah but, can i get a new manager whoever loses Cody can, whoever wins me? whoever wins gets to fire their manager <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Infield Fly. Talking baseball with you each and every week. Tune in again next week, and don't forget to download the uh, Grind City Media app for uh, easy access to the program. For Keith Murphy, for Lang Whitaker, I'm Rob Fisher. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again next week here on Infield Fly.